Katie, uh, check the spelling on anachronistic, will you please? Anachronistic? It applies perfectly to Congressman Addison. He belongs back in the 17th century. You're not going to say that to him. One congressman criticize another personally? No, I'll say it about his bill. Addison will get the point. <laughs> Hi, Dad. Hello, Danny. Katie, good evening. Writing speech? No, I'm just typing out a report to one of the committees I'm on. How's it going, Dad? Not bad. How's your homework going? Not good. I don't know how to start my composition for tomorrow. Well, what's it about? Maybe we can help. Mr. Morley, Danny's teaching has asked the children to use their own imagination on this composition. To write what they think without help from anyone. But can't somebody help me find out what I'm thinking? The only way we can help you is by not helping. But it's bedtime, Katie, and I haven't started yet. We'll forgive you for staying up late tonight, since this is a particularly difficult assignment. Okay. Good night. Good night, sir. You can do it, Danny. Try. You have a lot of confidence in that boy. I think he's old enough and smart enough to write something without someone looking over his shoulder. Anachronistic. One end. <laughs> it's his father who needs the help. <laughs> Oh, Agatha, you know I have only branch water in the mornings. Only branch water. And you know we don't have any. <laughs> Mrs. Brubaker. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Brubaker. Would you like some coffee? Thank you. Well, yes, Margaret. Don't rush me, Agatha. Katie Holstrom, it's my pleasant duty to inform you you've been invited to appear before the membership committee tomorrow morning at 11 sharp. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Brubaker. I told you there was nothing to worry about. And if you're accepted, we'll expect you to be a sincere and constructive member of the WMC. What is the WMC? The Washington Mothers Club. The Washington Mothers Club? <laughs> the Washington Mothers Club. And you're joining? I propose Katie's name as a member of the club. She wanted to make some new friends, and she wanted to work for the children's home. WMC does important work in many adoption cases. It's not just the Mother Woman's Club. Well, on second thought, why not? Katie's got more maternal instinct in her little finger than most mothers I know have in their entire library of books on child psychology. Let me be the first to congratulate you. Oh, not yet, Mr. Warren. First, I must be accepted. Is that not true, Mrs. Brubaker? True, true. There'd be no difficulty about that. Let us not forget Geraldine Addison. Paul Addison's wife? A congressman's wife. Is she anachronistic, too? Very. Excuse me? And precisely what is Geraldine's problem now? Well, she feels that Katie has no children. Therefore, she's not a mother. I feel she's a fine candidate, a friend of yours, Agatha, and a worthy exception to our rule. And when Mrs. Addison hears your talk, she'll be convinced, I'm sure. I hope. <laughs> what talk is this? about any experience you've had that might be of interest to the parents. What would I talk about? Why, Katie, child's development in terms of creativity and imagination. Danny's experience, for instance. In writing his own competition. Yeah, that is a good topic. Would that be all right? 
Oh, fine, fine. Well, I've got to be running along. I must go to I must go to Look, Mrs. Brubaker, <laughs> have you your car, or may I drop you somewhere? <laughs> when my husband would say that, I'd always say, on my head. <laughs> but he never did. <laughs> no, I have my car, thank you. But we can walk together to the curb. <laughs> Goodbye, Katie, Agatha. See you tomorrow, 11 o'clock sharp. We'll be there. Goodbye, and thank you, Mrs. Brubaker. Well, how do the elections look to you, Mrs. Brubaker? Confused, confused. I can't seem to get a clear picture of the prospects this year. <laughs> I suppose you're wondering how she got elected president. It's no more strange than how I became a mother. In here, Danny. The teacher likes my composition. She thought it was very funny. Oh, that's wonderful, Danny. She laughed a long time after I read it. Did she? I'm very anxious to hear it. Well, come on. Sit down. What I remember about the fun we... Oh, I already told you the title. Yeah, I know the title. Last Monday, two painters came to our house. First, they covered the floor with lots of white sheets. Then they started to paint the wall. And the white sheets and their white clothes got little color spots all over them. That's very good, Danny. That's exactly what happened. Wait! I'm coming to the funny part! Oh, well, I'll get ready to laugh. When Steve and Grandma and our governess, Katie, looked at the painters, we all laughed because they looked so funny. Oh, <laughs> not yet! <laughs> Later, the painters went home. That night, Katie slept in Daddy's room. <laughs> <laughs> when did it happen? What difference does that make? It happened. And Peggy is absolutely sure. She heard it from her own child who heard it from a bona fide eyewitness. <laughs> I can hardly believe it. It's juicy, isn't it? <laughs> Hello, Adele. Agatha, we want the truth. Are they secretly married? I can't tell you. Oh, why not? I don't know who you're talking about. Who? <laughs> Len and Katie. Nonsense. Why would they do a thing like that? Well, then what are their wedding plans? None that I know of. None. <laughs> <laughs> it's so terribly romantic. It's ruining politically. Oh, it's ruined bigger men. What on earth are you talking about? Agatha, you mean you really don't know? You mean there really is something to know? Oh, Agatha! <laughs> well, well, Daddy, Daddy wrote a teacher gave me a promise in which he gave a lot of money and I would tell you how to do it. Would you mind if I explain something about your composition to your daddy before you read it to him? No, Katie, please. I want to be the one to surprise him. <laughs> All right. I guess we won't do any harm. Well, hello, Danny. Katie. Good morning. Hi, Dad. What I remember about the Danny. fun we... Danny, I've already heard it, or at least parts of it. You have? What I want you to do is go out and play. We'll, uh, we'll talk about it later. Later? You promise? Yes, I promise. You want to read it in the meantime? Yes, I, I'd like that. Don't lose it. See you later. I presume you've had a chance to read this. Yeah, but how did you know about it? I got a call from Senator Ames. He heard about it from his, his ex-wife's sister, who got it from some cab driver, who got it from somebody in the State Department. By now, it's all over Washington. All over? All over. Oh, what a mess. I admit, I was quite shocked when I first heard about it, but uh, now I think it's quite funny. Well, I don't. Why didn't Danny's teacher run this creative experiment after the election instead of before? It certainly can make no difference in the election. 
It could conceivably blow me right out of office. Talk about getting caught in a compromising situation. You're not the only one who was caught, Mr. Morley. And that doesn't concern you? Not under the circumstances. I think you're making a mountain out of a molehill. Besides, nothing could be further from the truth. I slept in your room because the paint in my room was wet. And you were in Minnesota that evening. All of which Danny left out of his composition. He did not think it was important. So how do I establish the facts publicly? Sue my eight-year-old son for libel? <laughs> you people made phone calls. I cannot believe in sophisticated Washington people will actually believe this. I'm sure you even exaggerate how many people know about it. Wait, wait, I tell you what I heard. It's a beauty parlor. Danny's composition? <laughs> Famous. And how did you know? How does anyone find out anything in this town? The good old grapevine. It has branches all over. Oh, Mr. Morley, you exaggerate. You hear something once or twice, and it seems that everybody is talking. But really, I'm sure in this case, nobody... <laughs> good afternoon, Reverend. Good afternoon, Glenn. I was in the neighborhood, and I thought it was time I dropped in and had a chat. <laughs> a shipwreck. And shipwreck... Would you like some coffee, Mrs. Rebecca? Oh, oh, no, no, thank you. Well, won't you sit down? I was not expecting to see you until later this morning at the meeting. Oh, yes. Uh, the meeting. <laughs> What is it, Mrs. Brubaker? You seem nervous. Nervous? Oh, no, I... Yes, I am nervous, my dear. For you. Oh, don't be. I have my speech all memorized. It's going to be all right. Well... Well... Well, I, uh, Um... Yo? Yeah. <laughs> Katie, I was thinking... Uh, maybe it would... Be wise. Be wise? Yes, I think it would. <laughs> Mrs. Brubaker? Well, if you would, just for now. Maybe a month or two, three at the most. Mrs. Brubaker, I know you're trying to tell me something. I like you very much, Katie. Lots of the girls do. Very much. Mrs. Brubaker, just tell me, please. I was thinking maybe you should withdraw your application to the club. Just... just for a little while. <laughs> Withdraw until this whole thing quiets down. And it will, my dear. This is the 20th century, after all. Mrs. Brubaker, I have done nothing wrong. I'm sure. But... Mrs. Addison. You see, this whole thing was really Mrs. Addison's suggestion. Mrs. Addison... kind of moral. So? So she thought... you might want to consider withdrawing your application. Very well, Mrs. Brubaker. I will consider it. You won't be angry, because I think it's always good to talk these things over, reach an understanding. Mm-hmm. That way we can avoid hard feelings. Well, I think that is simply outrageous. Yeah, but... You're not going to do it, are you? You're not going to withdraw. Well, I am considering it. After all, it is my fault. Well, I don't see why. You did want me to supervise Danny. Well, yes, but nobody could foresee a thing Still, like this happening. Well, you did think he was too young. I want you to know that I do not hold you responsible at all. Thank you. I've been thinking, with your election coming up, I cannot do anything to cause you embarrassment. I'm deeply touched, Katie. I really am. This much I owe to you. But I think that you should forget... What should I do? That I can't tell you, Katie. You have to make up your own mind. But I will tell you, and I mean this, that whatever decision you make, I will stand behind you. Mrs. Brubaker had no business putting you under that kind of pressure. I do not think it's Mrs. Brubaker, but Mrs. Addison who brings the pressure. That woman. She's just like her husband. I think Mrs. Brubaker is afraid of her. Maybe she exaggerates the problem. After all, they are two intelligent women. I'm sure we're worrying over nothing. As a charter member of the Washington Mothers Club, 
and a close friend who has come to know and love her, I have great pleasure in introducing Miss Katie Holstrom for the committee's approval. First, I would like to thank the entire membership committee for accepting my application as honorary mother member in your wonderful organization. I hope my speech will be of interest to all of you. Just read Danny's composition. That'll be interesting enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mrs. Addison enjoys a good joke. <laughs> Humor is important in the upbringing of children. I'm sure we all agree nothing is more rewarding than the proper guidance of the young in character development. Character development? You do not approve of character development, Mrs. Addison? I do not approve of the speaker, Miss Holstrom. That is obvious, Mrs. Addison. It is also unforgivably rude. Will you please refrain from interrupting? Please, Mrs. Morley. If, uh, if I offend Mrs. Addison, I, I would like to know why. Well, really, are we to be subjected to this? Young lady, have you no pride? Sure, I have pride. In the past 24 hours, an unfortunate incident has blown up into a minor scandal. Ladies, I did stay in Mr. Morley's room that night. While he was hundreds of miles away in Minnesota, because the paint in my room was wet. Now, if that makes me a fair target for the distasteful jokes of Mrs. Addison, and if the rest of you ladies share her immoral ideas on justice, I think I would like to make my friends elsewhere. Hey! Wait for me. <laughs> I still think we should go home. Now, take my advice, sit down. Relax and cool off a bit. Mrs. Morley, you are a good friend. I don't know how to begin to apologize for those women. Please, it is not your fault. I only regret that I lost my temper. That was not right. Now, you couldn't stand by and let Mrs. Addison heckle you so embarrassingly. But the husbands of those women are men Mr. Morley comes in contact with every day. Glenn's a big boy now. He can take care of himself. And because of me, you have lost your friends. If I've lost anyone, it wasn't a friend, I assure you. Besides, I'd rather be friends with you any day. <laughs> So there you are. Mr. Morley, there's something I have to tell you. I'm sure there is, and I'm dying to hear it because I can't get a word out of Mrs. Brubaker. Mrs. Brubaker is here? In the living room. And apparently prepared to make a good long wait of it because she brought her own six-pack of branch water. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Brubaker, you can't know about my composition. I haven't read it yet. Believe me, it's been brought to my attention. <laughs> what I remember about the Danny, point. I think Mrs. Brubaker is here to see me. I certainly am. Margaret, I've had a very trying day. So have I. But now I have an important announcement. It is my great pleasure, Katie Holstrom, to inform you you are now an honorary mother in the WMC. What does that mean? It means Katie has been accepted for membership in the Washington Mothers Club. I wish I could say it was unanimous. You can't expect miracles. The vote was 11 to 1 for Katie. But there are only 12 women on the membership committee. And I left before the vote. I voted twice. Once for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And that's not all. I also told off Mrs. Addison. You? Did. And I must say, it wasn't so hard once I got started. <laughs> Marvelous. I'm proud of you, Margaret. I must say, I had a jolly good time doing it, too. <laughs> I remember about the fun we had. Danny, I'm sure Mrs. Brubaker is not interested in hearing your composition. Oh, but I am. I certainly am. <laughs> what I remember. Hello, son. Hi, Dad. 
Katie? We understand from your grandmother that you've written another composition. This one's even better than the first one. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Mmm, spelling's improved, too. You know, you used to spell love, L-U-V. Now you spell it L-O-V-E. <laughs> Holding's right, H-O-L-D-I-N-G. Oh, but there are two G's in hugging. <laughs> now can I read it? Shoot. <laughs> Last Fourth of July, our little league had a baseball game. I was the pitcher. I love to pitch. The man on first was hugging the face and couldn't steal because I was holding him on. That night, we all got scared because it thundered and lightning and there was no fireworks. The teacher didn't laugh like she did at the first one, but she said it was very good. It's beautiful, Dad. Do you like it, Dad? Son, more than you will ever know. <laughs> Tonight at 8 Eastern, Bud sails with Captain Ahab on the Flipper Hour. Then at 9, an exciting close-up of the event shaping our lives on the 700 Club. Now stay with us for the Patty Duke Show, next on CBN. Work up your morale, her brand of charm is so disarming, frown, turn upside down. The old one that's too sweet, she's just what we've been meeting, so glad the farmer's daughter came to town. 